Welcome back to another Ariel Paints video. Today I am going to show you guys what it looks like when I paint at a birthday party. So you are going to see me set up my chair and my craft and go to get started. I will put links down below to this chair as well. I have had it for many years now and it has served me very well. I haul it all over the place so click the link below if you would like to see it and I'm just setting up my craft and go. Usually I do it even faster than this, but I was trying to do it at an angle so that you guys could see it. Um, but it's a really easy setup. You can also go to some of my other craft and go videos. I'll leave a card um, here in the video for you to click on as well. So at birthday parties, I always paint the birthday girl first. I'm going to adjust my camera a little bit so that she is in frame and all of her friends are coming to watch her get painted. She wanted to be a butterfly fairy with sparkles, I believe she told me. Um, this is sweet Alice's birthday party and I was lucky enough to paint at her party last year and she invited me back again this year. I know she's excited to watch this video, so happy birthday, Alice. Thank you for having me. I hope you had a lot of fun. So you are going to see me use a one stroke and do a butterfly. And then I also let Alice pick out a very pretty gem from my gem collection. A lot of time I'll give the birthday girl the pick of a gem. Um, if there's tons of kids, which I believe there are about 16 other um, kids I painted at this party. Um, so I usually won't let everybody pick out a gem like to reserve that for um, the person who it is their special day. In this case, it was Alice's special day. And then I give all the other kids full face designs that are just as special, but the birthday girl gets something particularly special. So you are watching me paint the one stroke butterfly on her. And once I'm done with that, I am going to do some double dipped flowers and some other lines and some detail. I'm going to go ahead and spray here with glitter as well. And then this is where I show her all my pretty gems and I let her pick out one that she liked the best. So I went ahead and I got some glue on that one so that it would dry up so that I could place it in the center of her butterfly towards the end of the design. Now I did let all the kids just kind of hang out and watch Alice get painted, but once she was done being painted, what I did is took some face paint and I went ahead and I numbered every kid's hand. So I do remember there was about 15 or 16 I think I got to. Um, one, it's a great way to keep track of how many kids you're painting at a party, but it's also a great way to not make them all just sit there and wait to be painted, especially when there's 12 plus kids. It's not fun for them usually just to stand in line and this way you're not overwhelmed with them standing around you either. So I went ahead and I just put numbers on all of their hands once Alice was done and told them to go play. Um, then I started on kid number two and then as I was finishing with number two, I got Alice's mom to find number three or I would tell the kid in my chair, go find the next number. And that's how I got all the kids back into the chair um, when it was their turn. So it's a really good trick at birthday parties and one that I like to do a lot. So now that the glue on my gem has dried a little bit and then it's nice and tacky, I'm going to go ahead and place that in the center of the forehead. And sometimes you have to press pretty firmly to make sure that it sticks. Usually before they get down again, I'll push on the gem and make sure it stays well. And this stayed really well after I had it applied, so no issues. I'm just doing some little swirls and lines. I do like to make the birthday girls the most elaborate and special out of all of them. So I'm going to give her some lipstick as well, and I do use disposable lip applicators for this, not a paintbrush. And then once I'm done with each kid who wants lipstick, I do put them in my dirty sponge and garbage bag. 
You can see I'm just pressing on that gem, making sure that it's adhered very well. And a few more dots and a few more little details. I think it turned out really cute. I was happy with it and I think she liked it too. This is one of the nice things about painting at birthday parties is you get to take your time and do things that are a little bit more elaborate and special. So you can see I just have my little portable mirror that I bring with birthday parties. I usually don't bring my entire sign with my mirror. And I, once she seemed happy with the design, this is when I went ahead and put numbers on all the other kids' hands and sent them on their way. So you will see me do a lot of the same butterfly because as always, if you've ever painted a birthday party, whatever the first person gets, that's pretty much what you're going to paint the most of. Um, so I had a lot of people say they wanted what Alice had. So I did a lot of purple butterflies, but some girls um, asked me to switch up the colors or I asked them if they wanted it a little different. And then I just took a lot of liberties as well, which I always do. So I do not put gems on all the other girls, but I make sure that they have a center of their butterfly. And then I added extra glitter or chunky glitter and um, other little design elements to make each one unique and special, but not exactly the same. So I'm adding some double dipped flowers. And if you haven't noticed already, I did speed this video up. This was about an hour and 45 minutes of painting, and it's been sped up to about 50 minutes of footage because I don't think anybody wants to sit here and watch an hour and a half long <laughs> video, um, but I didn't want it to be too fast that you couldn't see what I'm doing. So hopefully this is an easy to digest video. You can watch it in parts too. Um, I know a lot of people were asking me for more on the job face painting videos. So I thought this would be a really, really good one. And this is one of the events where I first got to use my festival glitter, which I'm using right now on this little girl and her butterfly. And I really do like it. I'm still using my pixie paint but it's nice to have the festival glitter as an option as well. So that was number two that I just got done painting and she went to go get um, the little girl that had a number three on her hand. So you might also notice that I have that cushion behind the kids in my chair. What that does is actually push the kids up closer to the front of my chair so that I'm not leaning over too much. And it pushes them up about maybe four or five inches, which isn't a ton, but it makes a huge difference on my back. So ever since I started using that, it's just two outdoor cushions that I've tied together. Um, ever since I started using that, it has helped me so, so much, and I bring it to every event that I do. So if you haven't figured it out yet, this young lady asked to be a mermaid, and I am using a One Stroke by Natalie Davies, um, and it is called Blue Wren, and it is fastly becoming one of my favorite One Strokes. I love it for mermaids. Um, I do a butterfly later in this video with it as well. That was one of the most gorgeous butterflies that I have done in a really long time. And the other thing that I love the most um, using this split cake is actually unicorn hair. I, that might be weird, but, uh, <laughs> but lately the way I've been doing my unicorns where it's like the horn in the center of the forehead and the ears, when I use Blue Wren as the hair, it just has this really nice balance of that dark blue and then the ethereal gold, and it's really pretty. So I probably should do an updated um, video on how I'm doing those. 
but um, really like the split cake. And then I do um, all sorts of different things with my mermaid. Sometimes I'll do what I'm doing here with the bright fluorescent pink um, larger scales. And then I did some smaller white scales, um, over the blue wren, always lots of glitter. And then usually I'll add big white dots to mimic pearls. Um, sometimes I'll add extra swirls. I switch up my mermaids a lot. Um, but I like doing the bulk of it with that blue wren because it gives the oceanic mermaid feel right off the bat. So here I have another butterfly request and I'm going to use that same original split cake which is a pretty pink and purple split and if you need help with your one stroke butterflies do check out some of my tutorials on that. I also have a really detailed um, slower breakdown on how I do one stroke butterflies which could help out once you get the hang of them, they're really easy, and I really like the control I have over a one-stroke butterfly opposed to doing them with a sponge. So um, something I do a lot these days. And this one actually turned out really pretty. I liked the shape of this one a lot. And I kept it pretty simple. I just added some glitter and then some white swirls to it as well. I think the butterfly and the one stroke kind of speaks for itself. So you don't have to add that much detail on top of that because the one strokes are really strong and beautiful. I went ahead and added some chunky glitter. I can't even tell if this is my, oh yeah, this is the festival glitter, um, the pink festival glitter that I just got. And it really does bump up designs, whether you're using pixie paint or festival glitter. It just adds this intense, beautiful sheen. So she gave it the nod of approval, so I think she liked it. I definitely got my butterfly practice in at this birthday party and there were a lot of really cute butterflies running around by the end of this.
this young lady requested a cupcake and I cannot remember the last time I painted a cupcake before this. So I had to kind of scratch my head for a second and like think of what a cupcake looked like, which is so silly. But when you don't paint something very often, it's kind of hard to come up with it out of nowhere. So I ended up doing kind of a cloud shape, which you can tell for the icing and then did a blue cupcake tin at the bottom. And then I ended up doing a rainbow one stroke um, going up around her eye because I didn't want it just to be like a cheek art icon. So I did that and then I remembered that I just got that really cool UV vivid glitter. So I decided to put that over the icing so it looked like sprinkles. And I think in the end, it ended up being really, really cute. She seemed to like it, and I thought it was pretty good for um, coming up with a cupcake design out of nowhere. So you can see I just added a few swirls and some sparkles to the rainbow of that as well. And there are a few gaps here in my video, but I decided not to cut really anything out and try to keep it as real time as possible. So I am waiting for the next kid and here they are. So this young lady wanted a rainbow cheetah. So I went ahead and loaded up a sponge with my rainbow and I'm just putting down a base. And usually all my cats, dogs, or um, cheetahs, tigers start with me applying color to the top of the forehead and then under the cheeks like I'm doing here. So once I had her rainbow down, I grabbed a new sponge with some white. I asked her to open up her mouth so I could sponge on the muzzle, which is a good trick so that you don't get paint on the bottom lip. And then I went ahead and added some white to the eyes and then made sure that I didn't have any rough edges. So I blended in that rainbow to the white. And you can see I'm just using black to do the nose and the muzzle, and I'm going to do the cheetah spots. Um, I also do hold my black a lot when I'm doing line work. And I gave her some cat eyes, some eyeliner. And then I'm just going to do the cheetah spots. I like to try to do them larger on the outside and get smaller moving in.
And then I just outlined some fangs for her, did some lines on the muzzle, and of course sprayed the design with glitter, and she was good to go. So I also don't bring a list to private parties. I don't bring my regular sign and I don't bring pictures. I know a lot of people that blows their mind, but I just talk to the kids. If it's girls, I always go, you know, what do you like? Do you like rainbows, butterflies, unicorns? Usually they have something in their mind that they want. Um, if it's boys, I say, do you like superheroes? Do you want something scary, cool? What do you want? Usually they're going to throw something out. If I need to show them pictures, I just grab my phone. I go to Instagram and I show them all the designs I do all the time. This young lady wasn't quite sure. I looked at her shirt and I said, do you like butterflies? Do you want something that looks like a butterfly crown that goes with your shirt? And she loved that idea and said yes. So I took my floral brush and I did a large butterfly in the center of her forehead and then I just continued with double dipped flowers and that floral brush and started to create a crown for her. Added some pixie paint and that's it. Pretty simple. So again, you know, I know a lot of people like to bring photos. They don't like the guesswork. I kind of like talking to the kids about it and I like coming up with ideas with them and so far it's never been an issue for me and since I have such a large archive of pictures on my phone, if I ever need to show them a visual of what something looks like or they need to look at pictures, I just grab my phone. It's just easier for me to have that digital archive than it is for me to print out photos or have some kind of book for them to look at. So I just gave her a very glittery butterfly crown and she liked it. So I'm also not shy with messing with kids' hair. I pull their hair out of their face. I have bobby pins in my kit. So if I need to pin their hair back, I do it. If they already have a headband on, I will take their headband and I will push their hair back so that I can get to their forehead. Um, just something that I do. Not sure if everybody does that, but I would encourage you to go ahead and do that. You know, if the parents are there, you can always say, hey, will you clip their hair back? But for me, it's just easier for me to do it and nobody seems to mind. Um, so this young lady also wanted a mermaid. So I went back to my blue wren and I do kind of a shell shape in the center of the forehead and then some kind of feathered out scale, um, almost like fins, I guess you would call them, on the outside over the eyes. And then I add my scales and glitter and swirls and dots and all that good stuff. And that's pretty much my go-to mermaid at festivals and private parties. So I always like to add some nice big white dots because for me they they give the feel of pearls which I like I just also feel like it adds some detail to a design that could be really boring without them So again, if you've ever painted at a birthday party, you know that it's trends. Um, and, and usually whatever the first young girl or boy gets, the vast majority of what you're going to do are those designs. 
So obviously, you know, the last couple were mermaids and then everybody wants a mermaid. This is so typical. Um, there was one party I was at where it was a unicorn themed party, but the first little girl, it was her birthday. She wanted an elaborate unicorn. So I did the elaborate unicorn on her and then I painted no joke, 25 unicorns in a row. It was a big birthday party and I was a machine painting unicorns um, and kind of thought to myself, why did I make it so elaborate the first time? So do be cautious. Um, you know, you want to make sure that the birthday girl gets a special pretty design, but don't go totally nuts because then when every single kid wants that same elaborate design, you could really get stuck, especially if you agreed to paint 12 kids in an hour. And then every kid wants a design that takes 15 minutes. You can really get in trouble there. Um, so this young lady came back because she really wanted lipstick. So I said, oh yeah, of course, I'll give you lipstick. I think she asked specifically for glitter lips. So I added some pink lipstick and then went into my iridescent glitter and gave her some glitter lips because everybody needs glitter lips, right? And of course, getting that out of my sprayer was not that easy. I need to start bringing a, um, a tin of glitter with me as well, just in case someone asks for that specific uh, that specific request I was not prepared for. So this is the young lady that wanted a butterfly, but then I asked her if she wanted it just like Alice's and she said no, she wanted it blue instead. And I grabbed blue wren and did a butterfly on her with blue wren. And man, I love this one stroke. It is just so pretty. And I was so enthralled by this butterfly that I am going to grab it more for butterflies. So really glad that I did this. Um, I just think it's gorgeous. So I hope you guys like it too. It just made me really happy. I thought it was so sweet. And of course she's so cute and pretty that it also helped. But that blue wren with the gold and um, the accents of the glitter and then I did some double dipped flowers to kind of accent it which I love doing that I feel like it's such a nice deconstructed butterfly you know you don't always have to do a butterfly body um, in the middle of a butterfly throw some flowers on there and how sweet and pretty is that I just loved it. It was probably one of my favorite designs because it's so simple. It did not take me long. It's not elaborate, but it's such a nice high impact design. So when I spray glitter on kids, I always tell them to close their eyes tight because I do not want them to open their eyes while I am spraying glitter on them. So I always say to them as I'm spraying it, close your eyes tight, 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 tight. Keep your, keep your eyes closed. And I talk to them the whole time. How sweet is that? Isn't she cute? I love her. And I love the dark lipstick on her. I just think she looked absolutely adorable. So this young lady wanted a butterfly, but she wanted a blue, purple, and orange butterfly, I believe is what she requested. She had very specific colors, so I showed her a couple splits and told her that I would do my best to meet all of her requests. So I ended up mixing a couple um, one strokes. So I did the outside in blue and then I filled in with purple. which is also a really good technique that you can use. You don't have to necessarily finish the one stroke butterfly with one one stroke. So you can see I did the outside strokes with the blue she requested and then I grabbed my purple and I filled it in. 
And it's a great way to layer one strokes and to satisfy those requests when kids want multiple colors. It doesn't take that much more time to grab a couple extra one strokes either. So I went ahead and sprayed her with some glitter and added some dots. And she was all done. So I also hear a lot of times on forums or people ask me um, if the chair, director's chair, is hard to get in and out of. And I don't think so. I mean, the, yeah, I always kind of hold their arm like I'm doing with this young lady just to make sure they don't slip and fall. But there's a little um, kind of footrest at the bottom of this chair that kids can climb up and stand on kind of like a ladder while they're climbing into my chair. I've never had an issue. I don't think it takes up my time painting, which I've also heard people say that, like it's taking too long for kids to get in and out of their chair. That has never been an issue for me. Um, what's most important to me is that I can get to the kids easily and that I'm not killing my back. So that's what I, you know, worry about the most with my chairs. When I started painting, I was sitting and painting and those first couple long events I did, I could not walk. It was horrible. I hurt my back so much. Ever since I switched to the director's chair and have this cushion um, that's pushing the kids forward and up towards me, my back is fine. I could paint for eight hours and be totally great. So um, I really like this chair and it works really well for me. So this young lady, I believe she asked for a neon rainbow cat. I'm pretty sure that's what I'm painting here. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see I applied the rainbow and then once again grabbed a new sponge and applied the white. Um, I also, you can see, went ahead and I gave her lipstick with the other side of the sponge. So the sponge I used to sponge on her white muzzle, I then flipped it and dipped it into my um, hot pink paint and I went ahead and just swiped it on her bottom lip and then put that sponge in my dirty uh, laundry bag because it's an easy way to throw on lipstick without using your daubers. So if you're already going to use one side of the sponge for that and it's dirty, you're going to have to put it in your dirty bag, then just flip it over, grab a little pink paint and throw on some lipstick. It is a super quick, easy way to utilize the other side of that sponge that you're already going to have to toss. So she was a cute little rainbow kitty cat. The next young lady in my chair requested a unicorn. I think it's the only one I did this entire party with, which is absolutely nuts. So these days when someone asks me for a unicorn and I'm at a private event like this, I always say to them, do you want a painted unicorn on your forehead with some you know, hair or rainbow, or do you want a horn and ears and you want to be a unicorn? And while I'm saying that, I kind of mimic with my fingers what I mean. And if they have questions, I'll show them a picture, but usually kids know exactly what I'm talking about. So she said she wanted one painted on her. So I went ahead and did the shape of the unicorn, and then I grabbed a petal sponge. I wanted to do something a little bit different and not how I've been doing them regularly. <laughs> um, so I went ahead and gave her kind of rainbow um, eyeshadow with a petal sponge. I sprayed her with some glitter and then did the hair and some details.
So if you guys have been watching my channel for a while or you follow me on Facebook, you know I love unicorns. I would paint unicorns all day long, all different shapes, sizes, designs, you name it. So I love it when kids ask me for unicorns. <laughs> so it's always fun for me and I like switching it up. I like trying new designs. So this one was really fun. It ended up being a, kind of more like a unicorn mask. And I started doing kind of these black swirls and I gave her some eyeliner and I thought it turned out really, really cute. I liked it. So if I could just do unicorn parties, I would be really happy because they're always bright and colorful and you always get to use lots of glitter. So they always make me really happy. Just threw on some lipstick and then she was pretty much done. So this little girl wanted to be a rainbow puppy, which I don't think I've ever had this request before. So it was kind of a fun one to do too. And I love birthday parties and events because I love talking to the kids. It's one of my favorite things. I also think it's really cute when I get like a chatty kid in my chair and they want to talk to me. <laughs> Um, I know some people might get annoyed by that, but I just think it's adorable and funny. And I think it's so cute when they're like so excited about my kit and have questions. Um, to me, it's kind of just exciting young artists. And I remember when I was little and when I saw an artist and, you know, someone with cool paint or colored pencils, I would get so excited. So I think it brings it back for me being a little kid getting excited about art. So I love that. Um, it's one of the reasons I love face painting. So you can see this little rainbow puppy is starting to take shape. And I went ahead and did the tongue so that it could dry before I get down there with my line work. And with any full face design like this, puppies, cats, leopards, you name it, it's the line work that really pulls it together. Um, you know, you might be able to do some decent sponge work, but if your line work isn't good, then I feel like you're kind of wasting the sponge work altogether. So I also think that good line work can save bad sponge work. We all mess up. I mean, it's hard sometimes if a kid's wiggly or you didn't get a good load on the sponge. So having good control over um, your brush and your line work is key. So I went ahead and sprayed her with some glitter and the little puppy was all done. And let's see who is next in my chair. All of these girls obviously got into the gum because every single one of them is chewing gum. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we were talking about color here and she wanted something specific and I asked her to pick oh I remember what it is so she wanted a butterfly I asked her if she wanted um, the same butterfly as someone else and she said no so I said well do you like any of these split cakes that you see down here and she picked this one. I believe this is, it looks like Neon Nirvana, which is a Leanne's collection, um, Leanne Courtney. And it is one of my favorite 
favorite split cakes. I am obsessed with this one. If you've seen some of my past videos recently, I mentioned it um, in my one stroke video, one stroke butterfly video, because I use it all the time. It is one of my go-tos. It is bright and pretty and I absolutely love it. It is one of the one strokes that I probably could not live without. So I can't say enough good things about it. I don't even think it's coming off as bright as it does in person on camera because it is so bright and so pretty and those oranges and ugh, I just love it. And it looked gorgeous with her dark hair. So we're getting towards the end of painting and this young lady also wanted to be a rainbow puppy dog. So I'm just loading up my rainbow split and I try to load them up well enough the first time so that I don't have to reload them again. It's not an exact science and it doesn't always work that way. But if I can load them really, really well the first time, then I can get all of my sponge work done and not have to go back and reload it. And it also prevents my sponge and my cake from getting muddy if I can do it all in one go. So I did it here. I got it. I had a good enough load the first time that I didn't have to go back. So then I went ahead and loaded a different sponge with white and I do the muzzle and then I go over the eyes and just kind of blend that color in so that it's nice and seamless. And then as always, go ahead and get the red tongue down so it has time to dry so you can do your line work later on. And again, you're going to see me holding my black paint. Usually I have like a little well of water built up so that I can just dip right back in to my pot of paint and then go right back to doing my line work. And this little, little bit of time that I save adds up and it's just easier for me to grab it. And I also feel like holding... I'm not really holding their head, but having my hand at the top of their head is kind of a cue for them to sit still. Isn't she cute? Oh, I love the rainbow puppy. It was adorable. Um, so it's just a really good cue when your hand is there. It just naturally prevents them from moving and wiggling around. Okay, so now you're going to see some kids come back for lipstick because some of the other girls got lipstick and if they didn't, they started to get jealous. So, <laughs> so I had some girls standing there wanting lipstick, so I, I threw some lipstick on them. And then this young man was the only boy at the party and he had a very, very special request. I went ahead and looked up a picture because I honestly, even though I have seen this movie and I've seen face painting tutorials on it and I've seen pictures, I have never painted it. So I just wanted to make sure that I was remembering it correctly. Um, and it is the terrifying clown from it. A lot of times I would use star blends for this, but, um, I, it was the very last, uh, paint of the day and I wanted it just to be nice and quick and I hadn't used star blends at all on anybody else. So I just went ahead and grabbed a fresh sponge and did a nice base of white. <laughs> So then I did grab my Star Blends Black to do the eyes. So I gave him some nice creepy hollow eyes and then I went ahead and started to sketch in um, where the brows 
were going to be and just like a little bit of those like frown lines just to shape the mouth and then I grabbed some brown just to give the eyes some dimension so they weren't too flat black. And this is a really simple design. I mean, I kept referring back to the photo. Um, there's not a lot to it. Um, but man, it is, is it creepy? And this movie just terrified me as a kid. And it's probably one of the reasons why I've not painted this. I haven't offered it. I've never done a tutorial on it because it kind of scares me. Um, I still get scared by this movie, but he was so excited and so excited to go scare his sister and all of her friends. And it was kind of hilarious. So you can see super easy, easy clown design, um, and a really, really scary, effective one. I'm scared just watching it. So <laughs> but he was so cute and so excited. So I gave him red lips, the red nose, and then I went ahead and just took some black and started to kind of outline the lips, but then patted it out with my finger so that it wasn't too defined. And then I added a little bit of black on the eyes too, and I showed him and he was super happy about it and got to go and scare everyone. <laughs> I'm pretty sure his mom was really excited about it too. So now I'm just starting to kind of clean up and um, get my stuff in order, make sure all my dirty sponges are put away, and then I've got a few more lipstick requests. So making sure all the girls who wanted lipstick have it because we all know you can't, you know, one person can't have lipstick without everybody else. Um, so these were my, this uh, cupcake lady, young lady with the cupcake, um, was the one who wanted glitter lips and the glitter just did not stick because I did not have enough glitter. So I went ahead and reapplied the paint and then tried to get a better load of glitter um, to get on her. So it worked a lot better the second time around. So usually I'm, you know, talking to everybody, starting to clean up my stuff, starting to, starting to pack stuff up and my craft and go makes this really, really easy. So I'm going to adjust my camera down so you can kind of see what I'm doing. I am putting my pixie paint away, my festival glitter, all of my dirty things go in my dirty bag. So I've got two laundry bags, my clean and then my, my dirty laundry bag. And in this cavity of my craft and go, all my gems and my extra containers go right down in that. I take all my dirty brushes and I go and dump my water if it's if I have time or if I feel like um, you know it's not too crazy in the kitchen I will give my brushes a quick initial rinse if not um, if I don't do that at an event then I just wrap them in a towel and then I put them in the dirty bag with the rest of my stuff so there's my my little cupcake friend um, so then everything goes into my laundry bags. I pack up my chair. You can see how I do that. I'm going to do it at the angle behind so you can see my chair. Throw my cushion in the bottom part. And then um, all of my sponges go in the center. I go ahead and I pack up my craft and go. And that's it. That's all I bring with. It's an easy setup and a really, really easy way to clean up after an event. So then I just wheel out of there with my craft and go in my chair. And that's how I do a birthday event. 
I hope this video was helpful for those of you who are getting ready to do birthday parties or wondering what that looks like in real time at an event. Please like and subscribe. Let me know if you have any questions at all. And don't forget to ring the bell to get notifications. And I will see you in my next video.